Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about static NAT, which is the first of the available NAT types that we're going to cover. With static NAT, it's a permanent one-to-one -one mapping, usually between a public and private IP address. This is used for servers which must accept incoming connections. For example, your mail server or a public web server, if you're hosting that yourself. The next type is dynamic NAT. That uses a pool of public addresses which are given out on an as-needed, first-come, first-served basis. These are usually used for internal hosts which need to connect out to the internet but they don't accept incoming connections. And the last NAT type is PAT, Port Address Translation. This allows the same public IP address to be reused. And we're going to be covering the other two types, dynamic NAT and PAT, in detail later on in this section. With the examples I'm going to be giving you, this is the NAT lab that we're using. So you can see that we are the organization over on the left, and R1 is our Internet Edge router. We've got a server, which is int s1, that's internal server 1, which is at 10.0.1.10. And then we've got our internal normal hosts, our normal desktops are on another IP subnet, as you would see in the real world. They're on the 10.0.2.0 slash 24 subnet. So we need to configure a static NAT rule to allow incoming connections to internal server one because it's running public services. Like it's a web server and it's supporting users out on the internet, or maybe it's our mail server and we need to accept email coming into the organization. Down below, you see the PCs. They're not running any services that people on the internet need to connect into, but they need to be able to connect out to the internet. For example, for our users browsing web pages. So that's what we're going to be configuring. For the examples, we've got external S1, X S1 over on the right. That is an external server that I'm just going to use for testing and for checking that NAT is working. So our static NAT scenario, we've bought the range of public IP addresses, 203.0.113.0 slash 28 from our service provider. It's a slash 28, so that gives us 14 public IP addresses. Of those addresses, 203.0.113.2 is used on the outside interface on our Internet Edge router R1. So let's just look at the diagram again. You can see we've got 203.0.113.0 slash 28 is our range of public IP addresses on our outside interface, fast 0 slash 0 on R1. And we're using 203.0.113.2 on our outside interface. And over on the service provider side of that link, 203.0.113.1 is being used there. So that leaves 203.0.113.3 to 203.0.113.14 available that we can assign. Int S1 at 10.0.1.10 is an internal web server which needs to accept incoming connections from the internet so that people out on the internet can browse our website. So we need to assign a fixed public IP address to accept incoming connections. We will use the first available address in our range. That was 203.0.113.3. So that gives us a, a permanent public IP address that external people can use to connect into our web server. We're using a private IP address on the inside of 10.0.1.10. So we're going to need to configure a static permanent NAT translation to translate the public IP address, 203.0.113.3, on the outside FAST0 slash 0 interface 
to 10.0.1.10 on the inside fast one slash zero interface for those incoming connections. Now the translation is bi-directional. So we're going to configure the, NAT, the static NAT translation for traffic coming from the outside to the inside. Our server also needs to send traffic back out to the internet as well. But we don't need to configure a separate NAT rule for that. Our static NAT rules are bi-directional. So it'll also take care of the outgoing traffic. So here is how we do the configuration. So on R1, first off, we need to specify which interface is the outside and which is the inside. So we say interface fast 0 slash 0, IP NAT outside, and then interface fast 1 slash 0, IP NAT inside. Then we configure the static NAT translation. For that, we say IP NAT inside source static. 10.0.1.10 is the inside IP address. 203.0.113.3 is the outside IP address. And that's it. That's the whole config. Now, whenever the host 10.0.1.10 sends traffic coming in on interface fast 1 slash 0 and it's going out to the outside, out fast 0 slash 0, the router will change its source IP address on that outbound traffic from 10.0.1.10 to 203.0.113.3. So that's for the outgoing traffic. For the incoming traffic, whenever traffic comes in with 203.0.113.3 as the destination address coming in on interface fast 0 slash 0 on the outside, the router will change that destination address to 10.0.1.10 and send it through to interface fast 1 slash 0. So this is going to take care of our NAT translation for traffic in both directions. To verify that it is working, send some traffic to or from that host with the outside and then do the command show IP NAT translation. And there's quite a lot to the output there, so I'll explain that in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.